Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. In today's video, we're happy to welcome the president and CEO of Wonderfy Technologies, Dean Skirka, who's here to talk about the company, their international expansion, and their platform or services in terms of their portfolio. Now we've got a lot to go through in today's presentation, so before we do, please take a second, smash the like button, you guys. Big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let us know in the comment section below if you're currently using BitBuy or any of the other WonderFi offerings, how you think they're positioned to other players in the crypto space, and your outlook for this sector in the back half of 2024. And with that being said, let's get in to today's interview. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we've got the president and CEO of WonderFi Technologies, Dean Skirka, on the program. Now, this is one that we've covered previously on the channel. I also have a personal connection. I use BitBuy here uh, as my Canadian brokerage to buy, sell, exchange Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the rest. So Dean, it's a real pleasure to meet you. I already use your services. And now to learn a little bit more about WonderFi, the parent company, it's going to be awesome. So thanks for making time today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So we'll get right into it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up at, at WonderFi? Yeah, absolutely. So I joined WonderFi back in March of 2022 when WonderFi acquired BitBuy. I had been at BitBuy for about four years prior. One of the first employees really helped me to build up that platform from the grassroots to where it was acquired by WonderFi. Uh, you know, wearing a bunch of different hats, started out in finance, started to work in the compliance department as well. And when we were acquired, I was the company's president and CFO. And, uh, you know, from there, my role at WonderFi was initially head of exchanges. The company had a clear view to continue to acquire additional crypto trading platforms to build up scale and really build Canada's largest and safest cryptocurrency trading platform. And, you know, over the course of the years, you know, as that became more of the core focus of WonderFi, you know, the opportunity for me to take on a larger uh, responsibility, uh, you know, became apparent. And I took over as the company CEO in about October of 2022. Yeah, it makes sense. And and you mentioned the word security. Obviously, exchanges and uh, on ramps for Bitcoin have come under scrutiny in recent years. So I want to come back to that security point in a second. But in terms of the company makeup at WonderFi, you mentioned that BitBuy is a large component of the organization. What other verticals or or what other compartments uh, live within WonderFi? Yeah, so we have been primarily focused on the crypto trading segment. We have acquired five crypto trading platforms over the last two and a half years. And through that process, we have uh, you know, increased WonderFi's user base to over 1.7 million, uh, million Canadians, uh, both retail and institutional. And today, those clients hold over $1.5 billion of assets on our platforms. Today, we operate two brands, being BitBuy and CoinSquare. And through the CoinSquare acquisition, both of those brands operate under one of two zero regulated uh, dealer members uh, it within Canada, which is the highest bar of regulation in the country. We also operate SmartPay, which we acquired as well, which is a global product, which allows merchants to easily accept digital assets for the goods and services they offer. We think crypto payments is an exciting and quickly emerging vertical within the crypto industry. And we're really excited to have a foothold within that. And when you think about, uh, you know, how we plan on growing from here, you know, we have recently announced our expansion into the Australian market through an acquisition we completed a few months ago. We'll have more news on that, you know, very shortly in terms of uh, when we intend to launch and how and which markets we can actually service through that acquisition. And within Canada, you know, we're really focused on rounding out the products and services that we offer really uh, creating that complementary multi-asset platform where our users can obviously continue to buy and sell the digital assets that we support, stake those assets as well, but also expand those services, you know, perhaps to, um, you know, equities trading and other complementary services that really fit within, you know, a one-stop shop fintech platform. 
Yeah, it's exciting stuff. I noticed the staking on BitBuy. I've got my Ethereum staked on there now. And I've noticed the growth of, of interest in this sector. Now, you man, uh, mentioned, I think, 1.7 million Canadians in terms of your addressable market at this point or current users. Can you talk to us about adoption here in Canada and in Australia? What are we seeing in terms of the general public and their their level of interest in crypto? Yeah, I'd say Canada has really been an early adopter with respect to digital assets. You know, you think back to the early days, uh, you know, there's a really strong community within Toronto specifically and to a broader extent in Canada. And, you know, that is self-evidenced by some of the early Ethereum founders being Canadian and, uh, you know, some of the early uh, and exciting protocols and platforms being developed within Canada as well. You know, today, about 13 percent of Canadians own crypto assets. We would expect those numbers to really grow, certainly through uh, the course of this year and into the future as well. And, you know, similarly, Australia is another uh, market where there is really strong adoption rates for digital assets. You know, we are fortunate in Canada that there is a clear and concise regulatory framework around crypto trading platforms like BitBuy and CoinSquare. And that has also really helped to allow the industry to grow within Canada. You know, that creates a ton of uh, protection for clients, which really instills confidence in them to use platforms like ours to gain exposure to digital assets. So we think that, uh, you know, high levels of adoption uh, coupled with a clear and concise regulatory framework are really fundamental for, you know, countries to uh, continue to expand uh, their relative interest in the digital asset industry. Certainly Canada has been a leader in that regard. We're starting to see, uh, you know, something or, or similar behaviors in, in Australia. And that's why we're really encouraged by, you know, our expansion efforts outside of Canada really starting in Australia. No kidding. It's funny you bring that up. I did part of my degree in Melbourne, Australia, and I too thought the cultures, the people, the demographic, almost identical to Canada, uh, just obviously better climate in Australia. So interesting analogy or, uh, or takeaway from you guys as well. Now, next question, points of differentiation. So crypto exchanges, as I alluded to, have really taken a, a lot of heat over the last few years, rightfully so, for some bad actors, some bad decisions. Now, you mentioned this is not only Canada's largest, but also safest, most regulated exchange. Can you fill that out a little bit, uh, especially with, with people trusting you with their money? Why is this so important um, for Wonderfy? Yeah, I mean, look, we are, you know, we are, we have a clear view on this industry and we want to build products and services that will help the industry grow over a long period of time. You know, I believe that's, been self-evident since my early days in BitBuy. You know, we were, um, you know, uh, fortunate to really build up uh, uh, BitBuy's presence in the Canadian market um, on the back of, you know, what happened with Quadriga when unfortunately, um, you know, that platform uh, exposed some of the, you know, lack of protection that existed in the market at that time. And, you know, BitBuy really wanted to lead with trust and transparency and build that uh, you know, reputation. And we focused on proof of reserve audits and using best in class uh, custodians and best in class practices around safeguarding assets and, and promoting a really safe and stable environment for Canadians to come in and, um, you know, participate within this industry. You know, I think that itself led to Bitbuy being the first marketplace to be um, you know, regulated through the initial framework that existed in Canada through the Ontario Securities Commission. And naturally, when we were acquired by Wonderfy as a public company, you can imagine, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the onus on being regulatory compliant and ensuring that your businesses are, are operating, you know, with best in class protections and best in class policies and procedures. And so that really carried forward through to Wonderfy. And, you know, every, platform we've acquired we've been able to continue to evolve our offering and really grow our presence as Canada's leader and with that responsibility becomes you know a clear um you know a, a clear importance on regulatory compliance and building things in the right way you know staking would be a good example we had spent 6 to 9 months working with our regulators to understand how staking works the various infrastructure components that we needed to offer this product and how we plan to offer this in a way that promoted innovation, but also protected consumers. And, you know, we think that the regulatory system in Canada has 
been quite collaborative thus far between industry and regulators. And we've always wanted to be uh, top of mind for safe and trusted platforms. And when you think about the acquisition that we completed in July of last year, where we acquired CoinSquare, at the time, they were the first and only Ciro, which is formerly IROC, dealer member for cryptocurrency. And so that really allowed us to take all of the platforms we had uh, acquired previously and consolidate them into that Ciro dealer member, which today is still one of two licenses that exist in the country. And so we have always been mindful on regulatory compliance and building things out in the right way, understanding this is an early, uh, you know, very early stage within the asset class. You know, it's still, you know, 10, 10 or so years old and, you know, really trying to combat some of the, um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, some of the common th uh, criticisms of the asset class by really trying to provide that safe place for Canadians to interact with this industry. And so, you know, again, um, you know, this has been a focus of ours, will continue to be a focus of ours. And as we look to roll out, you know, additional products and services that we believe Canadians are looking for within this asset class, it's going to be in collaboration with the regulators here to build something and build products that have longevity and will provide Canadians with confidence in terms of the abilities to use these platforms in a safe and compliant manner. Yeah, I love to hear that, especially as a customer on the on the exchange front. And the fact it's refreshing to hear that you're building it the right way from the from the ground up, right? Um, obviously, protecting people's security and, and their trust is paramount. Now, you mentioned the expansion into Australia as a recent uh, development at the company. What else do we have in terms of press releases, news that's noteworthy right now for people watching? Yeah, look, we're really excited about what we're putting together in Australia, and we think that there'll be more to come, you know, shortly with respect to our plans and uh, offerings within that within that region. Um, you know, beyond that, as I've mentioned, we have recently completed an, the migration of the BitBuy platform into the CoinSquare regulated entity, which is a project we've been working on for months. You know, on the back of that, we are now very much focused on the product and how can we just continue to evolve the product and improve the feature set and the functionality that exists on the platform. And so in the weeks and months ahead, we expect there to be, you know, significant uh, improvements to the offering, the BitBuy mobile app, the CoinSquare mobile app. We have a lot of exciting, um, you know, plans for the product on how to improve it, how to add functionality, utility, you know, really understanding, um, you know, what Canadians are looking for with a crypto trading platform and to be able to give them, you know, that offering uh, with us is very important. You know, the, the industry evolves quite quickly and you can think about, you know, whether it's DeFi or NFTs or, um, you know, more broadly products and services like margin and derivatives offerings that globally have significant demand when you look at the broader crypto industry. And we think that, you know, finding ways to introduce these products and services will be really important to the long-term growth of our platforms. And so we're spending a lot of time trying to educate regulators on some of the building blocks that we think these platforms will need beyond crypto spot trading and beyond staking, which we obviously introduced, you know, over a year ago. And so when you think about, uh, you know, the platforms that we operate today, you know, you can expect new and exciting features, improved uh, user experiences, added functionality, whether it's funding methods or types of, um, you know, trading that exists. And, you know, we're really excited about, you know, the next six to 12 months of our product roadmap and being able to continuously build and improve on, you know, the solid foundation that we have. Yeah, it all sounds great. Now, next question for you. We cover a lot of Bitcoin mining companies on the channel as well. Uh, in your opinion, why would people want to consider an investment in something like WonderFi as opposed to a Bitcoin ETF or the Ethereum ETF coming out or a Bitcoin miner micro strategy? There's now a, a number of ways to play kind of the crypto Bitcoin sector. Um, what are the the benefits of WonderFi? Yeah, look, I think WonderFi is in a really strong position where we've demonstrated how our platforms, uh, you know, uh, respond to improved market environments for digital assets. When you think about the growth we've seen over the last three quarters, we've been able to grow 
um, you know, trading volumes from about five hundred million dollars in Q three twenty twenty three. They almost, I mean, they, excuse me, they more than doubled to over one point one billion in Q one of twenty twenty four. Similarly, you know, uh, revenues went from about ten million in Q three twenty three to over eighteen and a half million in Q Q one of this year. And that really, you know, is a reflection of the trading platforms that we operate and the opportunity that they create as volatility uh, picks up and as market sentiment continues to improve. You think about the catalysts that exist in this market, you know, whether it's the successful launch of the Bitcoin ETFs, the Bitcoin halving that recently passed, the upcoming Ethereum ETFs, which many are expecting to, uh, you know, begin trading as early as, uh, you know, first week of July. There is a lot of excitement within this asset class. And when you think about exposure to, you know, the Bitcoin ETF or shortly the Ethereum ETF, you know, that is one way to get exposure to this market. You know, what we typically see is, uh, you know, individuals that buy the Bitcoin ETF, let's say, as an example, you know, that's their entry point to this industry. The industry, as I've mentioned, is much broader than Bitcoin. And that is, you know, typically the start of their journey or life cycle. And, you know, quickly, um, you know, leads to an understanding of, well, what is Ethereum? What other layer ones exist? What is a layer two? Uh, what are NFTs? What is DeFi? And as, you know, those learnings, uh, you know, continue, there is a significant need for platforms like BitBuy and CoinSquare to be able to offer those, uh, well, offer exposure to those different assets within the ecosystem. And so we think that, uh, you know, the Bitcoin ETF is a significant um, significant catalyst for more participants over a longer period of time coming into the asset class and learning some of the different, uh, you know, components of it and finding areas where they want to get further exposure than just the Bitcoin ETFs. When you think about uh, WonderFi compared to, uh, you know, Bitcoin miners, as an example, you know, those are very CapEx heavy businesses where the cost to produce Bitcoin, you know, is obviously quite expensive with respect to, um, you know, the real estate that's required and the computing power that's required. And you're consistently seeing them having to, um, you know, uh, raise significant capital to be able to, uh, you know, reinvest in new hardware as, as you know, the machines have a very short lifespan and become, you know, sort of, uh, you know, suboptimal compared to, you know, new, newer machines and equipment. And when you think about our platform, you know, we've taken five crypto trading platforms in the Canadian market, and we've condensed them down to a single tech infrastructure and offering. This tech infrastructure that we've built is super scalable and has capacity far beyond where we are today without meaningful CapEx. And so when you think about our business, you know, as evidence through, you know, the growth we saw from Q3 of last year into Q1 of this year, you know, that didn't require meaningful investment with respect to our technology and our infrastructure. And so that's one of the benefits of our offerings is that, you know, we are, um, you know, we are clearly, uh, you know, benefiting from the scale that is offered through our tech stack and our, you know, exchange. And through that, what we've now established is in a path to global expansion. And so taking everything we've, you know, really perfected in the Canadian market, the understandings that we've gained through operating regulated crypto trading platforms and being able to bring these into new markets like Australia create meaningful opportunities. And again, require limited CapEx because we have the tech and we're able to continue to scale using the technical infrastructure that we have. And when you think about WonderFi, through its consolidation efforts, we have created a market leading position in the Canadian market. We have a very strong balance sheet that we are you know, excited to begin and to start investing in, you know, in areas like global expansion. And, you know, we think that our platforms will continue to perform incredibly well as, you know, we enter this next cycle of crypto adoption. And, you know, whether it's on the retail front or our institutional offering or our payment solution, you know, we have done a really good job at diversifying WonderFi from a revenue perspective, from an offering perspective. And we think that it is really complimentary for anyone looking to invest in the asset class, uh, you know, in terms of exposure and in terms of comparables from a public market perspective. Sure. 
Yeah, great response. Really interesting to hear your perspective compared to the miners. As I say, we we spend a lot of time with them, but great answer there. Uh, very exciting time for the entire sector, specifically Wonderfy. It seems as though you've got a, a clear path uh, of growth ahead of you. I'll throw it back to you for any closing thoughts. I know we've covered a lot in today's presentation, but if there's anything we've missed, Dean, uh, feel free to to throw it in here. And thank you so much for the time. Yeah, no, we appreciate coming out here and happy to come on anytime to uh, provide updates. Certainly, you know, we've got a really strong roadmap ahead of us throughout the rest of this year. We'd love to come back and update you on, you know, our progress in Australia and, uh, you know, the other initiatives that, that we're working on. And, um, you know, for anybody that's looking for more information on Wonderfy, we're available on uh, online at wonder.fi. You can follow us on social and you know, feel free to reach out if uh, you have any questions in particular. Great. I'll leave the website, the Bitbuy link, uh, all the corporate information in the video description below you guys. If you have any other questions for Dean and the rest of the team at Wonderfy, uh, feel free to leave them below. If you're still watching at this point, hopefully you found some value. So hit the like button, you guys subscribe to the channel. And uh, Dean, you're more than welcome back anytime. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow.